we've seen that digital products as simple as a connected light bulb involve already extensive infrastructure, the number of fundamental facilities and systems to deliver its functionalities. Let's dive into a critical facility of this infrastructure, the Internet. We said it is a global network connecting computers. It is even a network of networks. At home, at a university, there is a local network which is itself connected to the network of an Internet provider. To make this work across many different computers and manufacturers, this communication needs rules. That is, the role of network protocols, a set of rules and conventions enabling machines to communicate through a network. It makes sure that both machines speak the same language to understand each other's messages. There are many aspects to agree upon. What is the nature of information? How is it physically transported? What is the destination? How is it protected? How is it compressed? All these aspects of network communication are ruled by different protocols organized in layers. Layers help us focus on what we need to design, hiding the technical details of it. The network layers serve this same purpose. However, it does not mean we should ignore them. We create an abstraction so that we can focus on the design of the product. But we need to be aware of the whole mechanisms under the hood with its opportunities and constraints. For networking, we can distinguish four layers of abstractions, each with a set of protocols taking care of the matter. The link layer transfers information from one computer to another. Examples are Wi-Fi or Ethernet. The choice between wired or wireless. And we will learn more about those in the next module on network technologies. Then the Internet layer connects networks. We said that the Internet is a network of networks. The Internet Protocol ensures that computers, one connected at home, one connected at a university, can talk to each other without noticing that they are on different networks, both connected to the larger Internet network. An IP address for Internet Protocol is the identifier of a computer on a network at a given time. Then we have the transport layer establishing a communication channel between two computers on that network. The information from its source to its destination crosses many different network devices that route the information like crossroads. The term router might be familiar to you. This is an example of a crossroad. TCP is a protocol at this layer that ensure that every information leaving the source is received in good order by the destination. However, you cannot always afford to ensure quality repeating information just to receive it in good order. For instance, when controlling a robot in real time, it might be more important, for instance, to send the information as fast as possible, even if that means some information will not be adequately received. UDP would be the protocol to use for such a strategy. Finally, we have the application layer. When every network details are taken care of by the lower layers, application protocols take care of the communication. Whether computers exchange web pages with HTTP, emails with SMTP, or even sensor data with MQDD. Okay, we've got a brief overview of what happens between two computers exchanging information over the Internet. But you might think yourself, what about the clouds that everyone is talking about? Well, the cloud is just an abstraction to hide a set of servers that can be reached out to provide services. Not only web pages or emails, but also ingesting, processing, and visualizing sensor data, broadcasting live video events, 
artificial intelligence calculating your shortest way on Google Maps or even answering on Amazon Alexa. These services require many different computers and capabilities distributed across the world, working together. However, YouTube or Siri users always request the same service. The cloud is another abstraction to hide the many different servers working together behind the scene to deliver a service over the network. Whether this service is provided by computers in a data center or by a mini small computer is not relevant to the user. This is the cloud. Then as a designer, what is in your realm? What is your concern when, when it comes to the internet? Well, the way devices connect and rely on the internet strongly influences what you design with benefits and constraints. We will call internet architecture how your product service systems reach and rely on the internet. So let's take a concrete example, a connected washing machine. Several use cases bring the needs for a connected washing machine. For instance, you might want to pay per wash instead of paying for the washing machine. It might be a shared resource for the building and you could know whether it is currently in use. It could adjust its behavior based on the sun and wind energy to consume green electricity. There are many different ways the washing machine could rely on the internet. First, we might connect the washing machine directly to the internet via a 4G network. This approach assumes that there is a 4G network available, but there is no assumption on the home Wi-Fi network, for example. It requires a data plan, which might be included as part of the product, but a minimal intervention for, from the user. Thus, it exposes the washing machine directly to the internet without a local control via the home network. The washing machine could also connect to the internet via the, the broadband router that we've talked in, in the demo video, the typical home internet box. Here, the user would need to set up the password for the Wi-Fi network, but there is no need for a data plan. If the connection to the internet fails, a smartphone could connect directly to the washing machine on the local network. The internet four layers are not the only way to make a network. We will see in the next module a wide range of network technologies. You might be familiar with Bluetooth, for instance, which could be used to communicate between the washing machine and the smartphone. Here with the red arrow. In this case, the smartphone would be what we call a gateway, a translator from one network to another. In our case, it translates from Bluetooth network to the internet network. In this scheme, the washing machine is no longer able to connect to the internet on its own, relying on a smartphone that is nearby. When the smartphone is away, then the washing machine loses its connection to the internet. Similarly, we can bring a dedicated gateway. This device plays the same role as the smartphone. However, it is continuously there, providing the washing machine with an internet connection at all times. It often makes sense for an ecosystem of products connecting through this gateway. The washing machine could also connect to the internet through a gateway while being able to communicate directly with another device. Here, for instance, in purple, between the washing machine and the fridge. In the energy optimization use case, for instance, the washing machine might tell the fridge not to consume green energy for a moment so that it gives the priority to green energy for the laundry. Finally, all this combination can also take place across the internet between service providers. The washing machine from a paper use company could inquire for the energy availability in the householder's electric vehicle provided by a car manufacturer. 
this would give an indication to when the washing machine can use energy sustainably. All these architectures bring benefits and constraints with a significant impact on how the user experiences the product, what business models it enables and what control it offers or imposes to the user. For example, a round trip from the washing machine to the company server and back to the user's smartphone will be slower than a direct connection through the local network. It will also provide more control and business opportunity for the company. The setup of the connection might be easier, up to no intervention required from the user, but it could imply a device that is more complex and more expensive. A gateway is a way to make devices simpler while reducing the latency as devices can talk on the local network. However, here again, it requires users to buy a gateway in addition to the device. On the business side, it might be an opportunity to develop an ecosystem of products. There are many benefits and constraints to balance across the dimensions and layers of the digital product development canvas. When you touch on digital products, it involves a network in most cases, making your design a distributed system. To wrap up this brief overview of the internet architectures and product qualities, I would like to use the eight fallacies of Peter Deutsch. These fallacies touch on topics particularly related to the network dimension and the responsibility layer of the canvas. Each of them brings an implicit set of recommendations to consider when designing your connected product. Feel free to open a topic on this course for the one you don't understand.